I sell I pre -auction. Boy, that's annoying, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not gonna blame blame my wife, but my wife gets annoyed when I sign up for things. You know, I sign up for those things like an Amazon and shit like that. Excuse me. And uh, she's like, what's this bill for? Do we really need this? Answers.com. Don't you already know you're Irish? I mean, there's stuff like that. So that pops up and she's like, do you need to really have this? Like, okay. <sighs> um, okay. I think we have everybody. All right. Um, so I appreciate your indulgence there. <clears throat> All right. So um, I probably don't have like a ton more actually to talk about, but I just want to make sure that. Uh, we're caught up. All right, so anyway, that's another delivery system is actually like the breaking news alerts. Also newsletters are actually uh, put out by news organizations to kind of actually get things out there to get people, um, you know, you know, going in the morning and give them, you know, stuff that maybe that isn't like, you know, a traffic accident or murder or something that's gonna affect their daily lives, but maybe just like news they would like to know or need to know or nice to know, okay? Um, and actually, let's go back to the shared screen. We can just want to make sure everybody got in first. Okay. All right. Um, okay. What do we got here? Well, that's that's actually another. They have something called a local update. Um, just check see checking here. Is that a newsletter? Oh, what the hell is that? Get out of here. There we go. This is their newsletter. And basically what they do is they list what they feel are like some of the top stories from the previous 24 hours, okay? Real estate's a big local story, okay? Obviously crime, that's another one, okay? Burglarizing home, important. Point Beach is actually a search term because if you're living in Point Pleasant, you want, or Point Pleasant Beach, you wanna know what's going on in your town, okay? So. That's another thing. Well, remember I was, uh, I was talking about the importance of local proximity. This is actually like what people are looking for is something that's happening in their town, in their schools, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. All right. Um, so anyway, yes. So that's basically that. Um, and like I said, I'll talk more specifically about how to craft headlines and things like that later on, but headlines are not required at this point. Okay. All right. Um, also for the assignment that's due on Monday, actually, you know what, actually another thing I meant to, actually, let's look at like, so I wanted to show a couple of your stories, if that's okay. Um, uh, actually, you know what, I'll tell you what. And, um, because I, just so you guys know that we're all about sharing in this class. <laughs> so I'm not trying to embarrass anybody or anything like that, but I just want to like basically show you the like sell. I'm actually I pick actually picked you. That's okay. <laughs> um, I, I pulled up your uh, essentially profile some of yourself. Yeah, no problem. Um, you guys actually did a good job writing. I have to say, actually, you got looks like you got some decent training beforehand. So I applaud you for that. Um, but there are some things that I'd like to tweak a bit. Um, and maybe maybe you already know how to do it, but maybe you weren't really certain or maybe it wasn't really clear with this particular assignment. Okay, which you know I'll apologize for um, in advance. Um, so anyway, let me go back to share the screen. All right, so Salvatore, I can't pronounce your last name. I'm sorry, Sal. <laughs> um, Travel. Yeah, I'll, I'll just, yeah, um, I'll just, Try to pass over if you don't mind, because I don't like to embarrass you or embarrass me. Um, all right. So, what is DCIM, by the way? What is that? I think it's digital communication okay, information. Uh, yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, the, the writing you guys have is like tight and it's like simple and it's very good. Um, what I would say is that, like, you know, I would probably like want to actually like focus on essentially like what separates you sell from like everybody else. Okay. So I probably, you know, would, I would, not, I would probably really not look for like something that basically would be like something that everybody else does. Okay. 
which is essentially like, you know, lots of people like major in sports journalism. And you want to go for like as close to like something as, you, as unique as possible, something that maybe only one person does, which is impossible, but as close to that as possible. You know, lots of people are in their first year, lots of people transfer from Brookdale, Brookdale, but you know, what I like to see sometimes is actually like, like maybe like people's aspirations. Okay. Um, and like, maybe like some of the things, and, and actually, if you, and this is actually the importance of actually like digging sometimes is if you find something actually that might actually kind of be what they call, they call it reporter radar, a little corny, right. But something that kind of flashes under a radar, it says like, Hey, there's something here that's probably separates South from everybody else. And let me just make sure I got this out. Um, and, and, Sometimes when I run into like people who, um, what's today's the 26th, right? 27th, um, part one. When I run into like people who say that they have an interest in like a certain career or something like that, I actually will like maybe ask them questions like, um, and I'll actually find that actually like they might have something like in terms of experience that maybe other people don't have. So that's, that's actually one area where I usually find the uniqueness in an individual, especially a Rucker student, okay? is like they might have like certain experiences that others don't have, particularly like in their, like in their, in their work interests and things like that. Um, like Sal, have you ever actually like done anything like in terms of like writing or anything like that in terms of like uh, the sports media industry or anything like that, or you know, uh, totally fine. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've created my own website and like YouTube channels and put out stuff there. Stop and, right uh, there to quote me off. <laughs> what that's dumb i'm sorry what? you said it right there oh i got you and um I, i'm an intern I'm sorry. and i'm an intern with uh the the sports communicate the athletic communications department bang reporter radar just went off hey man i try everything and when i do these digital sessions okay i know it's corny <laughs> I got but <you>. uh <laughs> intern right you said right uh yeah intern yeah and started on website bang i know lots of people start on the website but how many people actually do you know right there that's your lead right there okay these two things i bet you, you probably can't find like more than maybe 10 people who have who've done maybe even less who, who are doing these types who are doing these things actual internship in your area right um area of interest that you want to pursue is that correct uh yeah what year are you in again you're a junior right okay yeah so yeah that would be my lead up here okay um is interning at i'm sorry what'd you say again it was uh yeah the uh, Rutgers athletic communications i would probably say something like is Pursuing his dream, a little corny, but of uh, entering the sports world <laughs> by interning at Rutgers Athletics Communications and has this is a website about sports. Uh, yeah, specifically the uh, Miami Dolphins. Nice, man. I gotta tell you, I admire you already. Sticking with the Dolphins, wow. Yeah, it's rough, though. <laughs> You know, when I was a kid, they were like the most popular team outside of the Cowboys and the Steelers, because like they were they won all the time, you know. But they haven't really done anything. And well, like since Dan Marino was there, so which was twenty years ago. Yeah, uh, I wish I was around in the uh, mid eighties, nineties. I always said that Dan Marino should have been traded to the Steelers at the end of his career. He would have won the Super Bowl. But anyway, <laughs> and that's his hometown too. So, but he didn't want to go. He wanted to stick with Jimmy Johnson. Whatever. Anyway, all right um actually yeah i saw some great games they had a great rivalry with the jets it was pretty amazing jets fans hate the dolphins um to this day also don shula that whole rivalry it goes back to super bowl three anyway sorry <laughs> anyway so what i would do is that that would probably that would be that's what makes Sal unique i would say at this point now what you want to do is you want to actually like go who oops you want to do the who what where why when I probably one of the first things I want to know is like, what does he do? Okay. You don't have to answer that question. So what does he do? 
one question I always want to find out is like, how does he do it? Because, you know, you're doing all this stuff. And at the same time, you're also like, I assume, have a full course schedule. So that can be inspiring other people, you know. And, and this is what you're doing. You're staying on a straight line here. Okay. You're staying on a straight line. And you're focusing on certain things that actually could, you know, uh, alert the attention of the Google algorithm, that sort of thing. And one of those ways of doing that is the search, a popular search term would be like Rutgers. Okay. Or even Rutgers sports, that sort of thing. Okay. I'm having like Rutgers, actually, Rutgers sports is a popular search term because, you know, people still look for the sports scores, whether it's basketball or whatever, and, you know, football's over, but whatever. <laughs> Football just ended, right? They just went to that Gator Bowl. Um, so anyway, you know, people are still, it's, it's a popular term. People are looking for it, okay? It's so, they might even look for like a term like website, okay? So you wanna stay focused on those, those words throughout the story, okay? Now, Sal, no offense, but I mean, if you were a popular person, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way, <laughs> sorry. If you were a person like as, as well known as Dan Marino, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, but let's let me go more modern, Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes, okay? Um, Josh Allen from the Bills, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm a football fan too. If you know, if you had that name, you would probably put that name in the lead. But since, sorry, Sal, you're not as well known, you probably would say something like a Rutgers student or something like that. You know, um, because that's a more searchable term, and 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 the and the Google algorithm people, that sort of thing, they look for. In the they look they look they they look for terms in 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 popular terms in the in the in the top of the story more than they do the bottom of the story okay or later in the story okay all right I'm not asking you to do that here okay I'm just telling you that's what you know how this typically works okay that's why usually you don't see like somebody's name identified in the first paragraph of a story you ever notice that unless it's somebody who's really well known okay like a Joe Biden etc Donald Trump um all right anybody have any questions on that i've been providing you some feedback on that again that's not a graded assignment okay so um i'll be providing you some feedback on that okay uh hopefully like by monday okay you'll be getting um work on it over the weekend i'll hopefully even before that maybe but we'll see and i'll email it back to you i hope i got everybody's email did i get everybody's email because <laughs> i want to be sure i get this stuff back to you okay so, um, all right. Um, so that's it in terms of end of the in terms of the writing of end of things. Okay, I just want to talk a little bit about photography and what to look for in terms of photography. Okay. Um, okay. So, because I did ask for that, and I'm not going to make this for photography session, but photography a photo in is. You know, obviously it's become much more important now. <laughs> well, I see it's become much more important. It's been your entire lives. But like 20 years ago, again, like people like myself or yourselves wouldn't have to worry about photography so much. You would actually just have a photographer do it for you, but now you actually have to worry about it. And you probably, it's a cliche, but you probably heard the term, every picture tells a story. Well, it's true, every picture tells a story. But it is, so that also means that it has to be essentially a story in itself. Now this gets a little subjective, it gets a little artsy, okay? It gets a little interpretive, okay? This is where you really have to flip that side of the brain, which I guess is the left side of your brain. That's creative and artsy and that sort of thing, okay? And and, and really kind of like in, interpreting a certain photo as not just as a piece of art that tells a story, okay? So, and that means that basically it has to be accurate, clear, and focused, okay? When I say accurate, that means essentially the story shouldn't be something along the lines of like, you know, like what you see people, people do with Photoshop where they uh, manipulate a photo to look like something else, okay? Um, so let me just see, I have to do the pinwheel of death for a second. So one of the most important things to do when you're doing a photo is you wanna, especially a photo that goes with a story. Now, you can't really avoid this when you're dealing, Lots of stories have what they call a headshot or a mug shot. And that's fine, okay? That's the purpose it serves, just to show the person's face. But if you have a, a photo that essentially is gonna highlight a story, even if it involves a story about a person, um, 
you want it to be more than just a headshot, okay? You want it to be more than just this, okay? I mean, that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't really tell much of a story right there. Well, you do get a little bit of a story because you can see that he's wearing gel clothes, okay? So, you know, obviously like, you know, it's telling more, it's, it's not, not his kindergarten photo, okay? So what you wanna do is one of the first things I wanna look for in terms of like a, a photo is that something that actually has something more than just a person's head in it, okay? Um, so yeah, I'm dealing with an old computer here. Okay, there we go. All righty. Hold on one sec. Design. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, sorry about this. All right. Yeah, not design. Let me try and insert. I was afraid this was going to happen. <laughs> um, okay, so. Anyway, you, what you want to do is you want, I'm, I'm sorry, I should check the head of this. I actually forget where the writing tool is. <laughs> um, all right, hold on one sec. Well, anyway, I should have checked that about that ahead of time. But anyway, you want to look for something that actually is essentially, first of all, is uh, horizontal, okay? Vertical is basically too much like this way and you can't really get in much of a photo because not much happens above somebody's head okay all right but a lot can happen like because that's going to the sky right unless you somehow manage to get like some like gigantic building behind them or something like that okay um all right so you want to like basically like i said horizontal okay reason for the horizontal is because you want to have you want to tell more than the person's face you want to basically have what they call essentially like background in the photo much like you would have background in a story okay all right um all right so basically oh, here we go so you want to do is you want to whoops it's not working great i apologize Nope, that's not gonna do it. Uh, once again, I am actually showing like my oldness here. Um, <laughs> this tool is not working. You wanna basically do something that's called the rule of thirds. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna just like Google the damn thing. Um, the rule of thirds. Okay, we're basically like you could break apart an image into three places. Okay, and that's a way of actually showing balance. You want to be able to like show that there's like three different things going on at the same time, and this is much better to do actually when I'm actually doing it on the board. So, um, yeah, why not I use Wikipedia even though they tell you not to do that, right? Um, all right, so basically, it really doesn't. Have, you typically is divided into like three places where you have. You see, actually, like where essentially this actually is a good idea right here, where they show you this. They show you, they're dividing into nine ways, but the root, the thirds are essentially like this third, this third, and this third is where, where they typically are going for. Okay. All right. And there's something going on here. There's something going on here. Oops. And there's something going on here. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So when you're dealing with like a, like a photo of like a person and you want to show them like in a background, okay? Let's see here, let's do Joe Biden, why not? Typically you'll see them actually not like with their face like smashed across the photo, okay? But you'll see them essentially like, usually like a lot of times leaning to one side. There's a vertical photo right there. Um, let's see here we got, ugh. I don't like the fact that his face is cut off, but this is essentially like a rule of thirds photo, okay? Um, so what they do is they typically, when they're gonna do a photo of Joe Biden, they're not gonna just like do it with like him, like right here. They're gonna show essentially the who, what, where, why, when, and how, as much as that, they're not gonna be able to answer all those questions. They're gonna try to show that as much as possible. So 
if you're dealing with like a Rucker student, you want to basically like, you know, show them like at Rutgers, probably. You want to show probably something in the photo that shows the most important, one of the most important questions to answer in a photo is the where, okay? Because obviously that tells part of the story about the person. And obviously it's so important to show the location in a photo because that's also always usually part of the story, okay? And obviously the where here is a campaign rally. So this is actually him running for president, okay? So you have this here, you have in this here. I mean, it's basically the same thing, but you also have this side actually has the American flag in it, okay? This side has like Joe, it's like an E put backwards or something. Um, so, and then him. And I think the emphasis here is Biden promised a black woman on the Supreme Court, okay? So basically they're trying to show that basically this is Biden now campaigning. Now Biden has, a, has an opportunity to regroup his presidency, which has been struggling lately, okay? On the in terms of polls and things like that. Um, now that there's actually a Supreme Court opening, they wanna show this is actually Joe Biden back to the campaign mode of Joe Biden, where he can actually promote himself and show him actually scoring points, especially for his base. So the picture basically shows that. Here's campaign Joe Biden. Here's Joe Biden right here. I'm not sure why they didn't put his face in there, but I guess they're going for some sort of, again, some sort of artistic image here or something like that. And, but there's background here. It's not just him. It's not just him with his face up here. Notice that it's also horizontal so you can get more into the photo. And then there's people over here. And notice, actually, I've noticed that they have also gone for a diversity of people here. So that's obviously important given the headline of the story, okay? could be the first black woman on the Supreme Court. Um, I think it will be. I think the person will be. I'm sorry. Um, so anyway, so you have essentially America and diversity here. Okay. And then you have other campaign section here. Okay. It's three parts. Okay. Campaign, America, and Joe Biden. Okay. So that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to present essentially a balance of three different things that basically tell the story. You don't want just like one thing in the photo that looks like something that they, they had taken at the East Jersey State Prison, okay? Or it looks like something like a bad yearbook photo or something like that. You want something that has balance of images within the actual entire image, okay? So that's what I'd like you to try to do actually with the, for the photo that's actually part of the assignment. Um, uh, for the part of the first time I was due on Monday, I think when you have a picture done of that person, okay, I hope you're able to do that. Just don't have a photo. I've had people do that. They've had the people they're interviewing send them a photo. Um, you know, if it's if they're like far away or something like that, maybe you like find a way to take a screenshot of them or something like that, okay, on, on Zoom or something, okay. What you should try to do is if you look at actually my image right now, you'll see that actually like um, it's not just me, right? I actually purposely put this behind me, right? What's what's behind me? Can everybody see it? What is that? The ocean. Ocean. Now, you might remember I uh, I mentioned something before that I have a connection to the ocean. <laughs> um, and what did I say before that actually would probably give you give me reason for putting up a uh, a picture of the ocean behind me? Where am I from? Did you say the shore? Yeah, from the Jersey Shore. So, so obviously the ocean's always been a big part of my life. I tried to surf, but I failed. But anyway, um, yeah, so there you go, right there. Um, so that's part of me. If you were gonna do a story about me, this is part of me. I probably would wanna try to get a little bit more into this photo, but this actually could work actually as a horizontal image of me. <laughs> um because this also tells part of the story about me okay that this is where i came from this has been a big part of my life this is where i find peace and serenity that sort of thing okay all right does anybody have any questions about that all right so um, what we'll do oh go ahead i'm sorry yeah i just have a question more so about like the profile itself yep um what what do you not want to see in the profile? You know, like you we went through like what we what you want to see, like the uniqueness about the person, the lead, and then going on about that uniqueness and what and why, and you know, but like what's something that you don't want to see? That's a really good question, actually. I mean, 
I think it's important. It's definitely important to put in like your biography character, biography information, like you're a Rucker student and maybe where you're from, the hometown sort of thing. But that thing becomes like secondary. It could be like, you could say like, uh, so I still can't pronounce your last, Suravalo? Suravalo. Suravalo. Um, a Rucker student. It becomes kind of secondary. Like you'll mention it maybe like as a clause or something like that. You'll say, so sort of, where, what town are you from again? In Alpen. In Alpen. Sort of Jersey Shore, right? <laughs> Yeah. Sravolo, South Sravolo, who was who originally came from Mount Nalop, and you would mention it as kind of like a secondary, you know, um, as an aside kind of thing that would be kind of sprinkled through the story, but you would want to stay focused on the actual overall topic. What I don't want to see is actually like, let's say you do a story about Sal, and let's say somebody's doing a story about Sal, and they basically, uh, you know, they, they talk about his sports, his sports interests and what he does and that sort of thing, but then suddenly like, somewhere halfway through the story we shift to something entirely something else about Sal. like let's say um you know uh, you know something that has nothing to do with the topic at all that's essentially this organization i talk about that makes it on focus and what that also does is it short changes the reader because we're not we're not getting enough information about what makes Sal unique we're basically like taking out probably additional information that could have been added to that story because there's probably plenty there and put in something else like let's say like you know something along the lines of like so you know maybe like the courses you're taking right now that have nothing to do with sports and you're, you're talking about how you're agonizing over them or something like that you know that would have nothing to do with the actual topic at hand but it would have something to do with the topic at hand if you're if you're agonizing over those courses because you're trying to do all these jobs at the same time like run a website and <laughs> and um and also do the uh, work for the communications, athletic communications. Does gotcha. that make sense? Yeah, I just didn't know, like, I mean, sometimes, I mean, I've written a profile before, I believe, like, I don't know, I don't know if you want any, like, any background information on the person at all, but, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to write on my brother, and he's part of the finance world, so I guess that's, like, the uniqueness, and then I'd go yeah. from there on, or just about the finance world, and not really get off track too much about background information, I guess. Exactly. I mean, the, the background is important and everything, as long as it actually, and you put that lower in the story, like what happened, like that led up to mm -hmm. him, him entering the financial world. Like, did he have any prior business interests, that sort of thing? But you, you could sprinkle in there, like he's from an Alpin too, or whatever. And that's fine too. You want to do that as part of the who, what, where, why, when, but, but, but you want to make sure that everything still stays on the straight and narrow. Like maybe like, how old is your brother? uh 24 okay so yeah he's just he's at the same age as my son so you know was there something like in 2005 was he was really was he reading the wall street journal in 2005 hmm. you know i mean i'm that sort of thing um yeah. my son's an accountant i don't know he, he showed no interest in accounting in 2005 i don't know he was only seven <laughs> so um so anyway so i wouldn't i would have a hard time writing about that yeah <laughs> um i probably would have to go a little more recent uh but yeah, I mean, I mean, that's probably an extreme example. Maybe he didn't do that, but maybe there was something about his behavior or whatever. Like, you know, maybe he always had an interest in numbers, perhaps. Um, that sort of thing. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anybody else have a question or anything like that? All right, guys. Look, I really appreciate it, and thanks very much. And I'm glad the camera worked. Um, so anyway. Um, uh, you know, I really appreciate the fact that you guys have stuck with us. Um, we've had good attendance, like 100%, of course. But, um, you know, I will see you guys at 8.30 in the morning in class, 114A, on Monday, okay? Let me know if you have any troubles, like, getting there. But please, let's have good attendance and let's get off to a really good start in the, in the classroom itself, okay? And like I said, we're going to use I'm, – I'll do some review at the beginning of the class, but we're going to use that as an opportunity to actually write the story and even, you know, deal with the photography and the things actually in class. Because So I want you guys to spend time on that, okay? All right. Thanks very much, guys, and I'll be talking to you. Have a good one. Yep. Have a good one, Professor. I'll talk to you. Yep. Thank you guys.